We have two scripture readings today. The first is from the Old Testament, from the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Let us listen for God's word. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. And from the New Testament, from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of rep repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord God, open my mouth that I may proclaim your praise. Silence in us any voice but your voice, so that in hearing we may be obedient to your will. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Before we dive into this breathtaking scripture. Let me first take a few moments of personal privilege to share a couple of, cro of thoughts that crossed my mind during my recent vacation. One of the things that Jenny and I did was to take a 10-mile hike in southern Indiana. And when you are tramping through a beautiful wilderness on a beautiful day, wearing good hiking boots that don't give you blisters, certain things pop into your brain, like gratitude. I am grateful for all of you. 
This has been a rough year, to say the least, but you have stayed steady. Yes, there have been good days and bad days for everyone, but your resilience and faithfulness has carried every day. You could have turned angry and resentful about any number of things, including God, but you didn't. Instead, you did the best you could day by day without losing sight of hope while keeping faith in God. I would stack you up against any faithful people anywhere. And as your pastor, I am amazed by you. So thank you. The other thing I want to say is how much our journey through the year 2020 was very much like the 10-mile hike that Jenny and I took in the woods. The trail took us up high ascents and down deep descents, just like the ups and downs of 2020. There were inspiring views, some of which were pretty precarious because you didn't look, want to look up when you were hiking because you might trip over a tree stump, which is what I did once. And just like during the year when one of you fell, someone else picked you up and brushed you off and offered to carry you for a while. And then there was the point about halfway through the trail when it seemed like we would be walking forever, just like it seemed like 2020 would be lasting forever. But at long last, the trail ended, and we stumbled back into civilization, and we felt like we had accomplished something important. We didn't want to do it again right away, but with perspiration and inspiration, we made it. And someday when we look back at 2020, I hope we can all say the same thing. It was a long journey, but we made it. We made it together. When you hike in the woods, things come to mind. And at least for me, these were all good things that came to mind, good tidings. And I offer them to you today. But my good tidings do not amount to beans compared to the good tidings of Isaiah. I suggested that this scripture reading is breathtaking. And that's not a word I use routinely. Breathtaking is the birth of a child. Breathtaking is a landscape that leaves you speechless. Breathtaking is an overwhelming sense of goodness of life that occasionally reaches down and grasps us. Today, for me, breathtaking is the word of Isaiah explaining that the hardships of the past are ending and that God's comfort is upon us. Breathtaking are the good tidings that Isaiah announces saying, here is your God. Now the context of these good tidings is important because it reminds us that we aren't the only people who live through dark days. This poem we read today was heard by the Israelites held in captivity in Babylon. Just like a virus holds us in virtual captivity these days, the Babylonians held the Israelites in physical captivity. We have been in a pandemic cap captivity for only nine months now, but for 150 years, the Israelites were hostages in a foreign land, a people who had lost their homes, their freedoms, and much of their identity. So it was no small matter for these lost souls to listen for good tidings. Such good news could be anything. Like maybe they would be encouraged by the promise of a little more food on their plate or a day off from their labors. Maybe the only good, time, good tidings they dreamed about 
was to keep their family together. So it must have been, yes, breathtaking for them to hear this prophetic herald announce that their national trauma was soon ending. Prepare the way of the Lord, Isaiah said. All the obstacles holding back the Lord would be overcome. The valleys would be lifted up and the mountains would be made low and the rough places would be leveled off. And then the Lord was coming. See, here is your God, Isaiah said. This is breathtaking news. Don't take it lightly. These are the good tidings that you've been waiting for. All in all, it was a pretty good day for those Israelites listening to this prophecy. Not only was it beautiful poetry, it was beautiful news. Because good tidings have a way of making every day a little better. And as we know, at the same time, the lack of good tidings have a way of making every day a little worse. During our hike a few weeks ago, we started out intending to go only about five or six miles. And this is not as impressive as it sounds. It really just means you start walking and you don't stop for two hours. That'll take you five or six miles. But about an hour into the hike, the trail split with one path adding another four to five miles to the hike and the other path being the original trail. It was a beautiful day, we were feeling good and in Jenny's very enthusiastic way, she said, let's do it. And before I had a chance to object, we were headed off on the longer trail. All was well in that trail until about an hour into it when we were cruising along and my foot hit a tree stump. I stumbled and I fell face first onto the path. Now 34 years of ministry has taught me that falling is never a good thing. You can break a shoulder, break an arm, break a wrist, break a hip, break a knee, break an ankle, maybe even break a couple ribs. And if anyone is watching, it's also quite embarrassing. Fortunately, by all counts, I was fine. I did a quick check, and nothing seemed broken, and the only thing bruised was my ego. So I got up, and we walked on, and then Jenny and I talked about the what-ifs. What if I had broken my leg? What then? There was no cell phone coverage there, and... So I said, the only logical thing, I said, Jenny, you're going to have to carry me out of here. And she laughed and said, I'm not going to do that. My wife turned me down, ready to leave me in the woods. And we talked on and on, and the other scenarios we talked about, they didn't sound any good either. The worst was that a bear was going to eat me while she was headed off to get some help. The bad tidings just kept coming as we talked. So goes the year, 2020. The bad tidings just keep coming. It is as if this pandemic captivity is a permanent condition. And there is no scenario we can see that offers us peace or goodness or joy. Well, into this doomsday scenario comes the season of Advent. Advent means waiting. And my gosh, do we know what that's like. Just like the Israelites waited for release from their captivity, we have been waiting for release from our captivity. And here comes some good news. Just last week, 
We heard some good tidings about a vaccine that is on the way. And though we still may have a few months of darkness ahead of us, we can see the light. Even as dim as it might be there, it's still there, and every day it's getting a little brighter. But while the coming of the vaccine is certainly a good tiding, certainly something to be happy about, it's not exactly the breathtaking news that will make us speechless. That is something more. For tidings that cause us to be breathless, we must reach for a higher plane where the division between heaven and earth is paper thin. And we can't find that thin thinness in a vaccine or in a ventilator. But we can find it as we move closer and closer when we realize the moment when God comes to us. In the reading from Mark, the John, John the Baptist has an idea about this moment. He says, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and tie the thong of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. These are the breath taking words you want to hear during the dark days of life. When your captivity has dragged you into, into a place of cynicism and pain. When the bad tidings around you have limped, left you empty and depressed. When you have fallen and you still have a long way to go to get some relief. Those are the times when you need the good tidings that a powerful one is coming. Isaiah called on that powerful one. John the Baptist called on that powerful one. And now, when surrounded by darkness, it is our turn to call on that powerful one. We have waited, and we have wondered, and we have asked, how long, O oh Lord, how long? And the answer comes. And the answer is soon. Very soon. Advent calls us to look ahead as we begin to recognize that God's breathtaking good news falls even now upon our tired souls. It is saying to us, you are not alone in the wilderness. Your captivity is not permanent. You will be comforted. And so, my friends, my amazing friends, if you're really listening, and if you really want relief, listen to these good tidings. They are breathtaking. Because there is nothing better than knowing that God is here even now, reaching down into our world through Jesus Christ to gather us in and to carry us forever. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.